Hello there guys and welcome to uh, it's about 11 o'clock on Monday I'm sure of the date at the moment I'm having a sneaky fag at my window so you're sat in my living room with me you can hear the sound of the traffic outside in uh, South Sea so um, yeah been a bit of a strange day today because um, I've signed off sick um, to give me a bit of breathing space really I really need the space to just not have to sort of run around and get things done at everybody else's pace and get all the infrastructures and stuff that I need in place for the sort of the bridge between where I am and where I need to be um, but with some of the I say limitations disabilities uh, hindrances that are in place and involve a lot of medical care, things like that, blah, 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 blah. So, anyway, um, yeah, I'm quite at peace with everything because I can see how things are unfolding and how things are moving. Um, I've been catching up in the psychology world and I'm finding it very interesting in the psychology world how they're starting to backtrack on all of the different diagnoses <clears throat> that exist um, and as the more I'm watching the lives and the more I'm watching their YouTubes and things like that the more you can see that everybody's wanting to progress to this complex trauma and things like that rather than all these individual labels and things like that so there's a lot of conflict going on in the psychology world at the moment and it's a really good time to hit the psychology world with the fact that these labels have had consequences to families within the services that have been using them and they need to get their acts right because children are being taken and I urge people to start getting involved in the debate in psychology about diagnosing and especially as they're talking about borderline personality quite a lot and also narcissism they're starting to sort of say that actually all of a sudden narcissists are empaths by the way and it's really interesting to watch the whole dynamics of the psycho <laughs> seriously welcome to the city living um city by the sea but um the whole dynamics of psychology is really sort of coming to a place now that the lay psychologist that's all been watching a couple of YouTube videos and, you know, causing problems in relationships by labelling each other and, um, you know, all these different things that have been going on because of people running with little concepts and ideas that they don't know anything about and how, you know, this is coming through. So that's been quite interesting. Also catching up with all the Epstein stuff because obviously, as we know, this links to Prince Andrew and the Clintons and all this sort of stuff and it's what people have been saying for you know quite a while now and it's about time it come to an end and uh, at the end of the day Epstein's life's come to an end and everybody wants to uproar over you know did he get hung in his cell how could somebody kill themselves but you know barely anyone wants to talk about Hayden who was found in his cell um, not because he was part of the the trafficking ring but because he was part of exposing it so you know I really do think people need to question whether you know Hayden was hung in his cell um, because he was also on SoCade suicide watch because of a previous assault on him um, so yeah you know there's a lot going on but I can sort of see how things are unfolding and coming around it all really does depend on these submissions and whether the the, the large amount of people are going to help floodgate this and we literally need to floodgate them with these documents, these word documents and make sure by the 30th of August when it's the final date of the deadline to get your submissions into the inquiry into children's social care which is being done by the Department of Education which means it's being held in Parliament officially and will be read and heard officially. So they have their opening question which is about the practices and time frames and then obviously expand the boxes with your own case and bring it back to how this has actually affected you based on their own question. So, um, and then obviously as I've said we're going to put an affidavit on top of all of this. So, um, you know, all of this is really important. It all links up. I think 
if people have the common sense. Had a bit of a charade with the Guardian today, and I basically let them that know that we were the people who didn't let their papers into their um, their uh, like headquarters, and now it was going to look like we weren't going to let them out in order to drop their papers off because sort of gave. I sort of gave the opportunity for them to connect the dots between sort of Savile, um, Max Clifford, um, Epstein, um, Prince Andrew and the Clintons and stuff to a couple of other things. And obviously their line of way of doing things, um, you have to send everything via email. So I decided to bring it back to basics as well using um, disability laws on people who communicate via phone and blah, 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 and making reasonable adjustments. So I am going to be sending all these emails, but the media really needs to hit on this quite quickly and catch up with what people for 30 years have been trying to say. And then, of course, you've got people like me coming along with the little white mice that pulled the plug, um, you know, back in 2013. And then, obviously, people coming along and, you know, Again, people are not uproaring about it. Again, people are not connecting the dots to the fact that children are being sexually, physically, emotionally abused by people who are paying money for these children and trafficking them through, you know, whatever source, whether it be the parents, um, whether it be, you know, uh, the work that children go through, be the music, modelling, stuff like that, be it... Um, the foster care industry, be it the children that are on the streets that are getting caught up with it, be it children that are born into it. The fact is, children who are innocent are being subjected to stuff that they need to be saved from. And we have to have a moral compass about us as human beings that say that these children can't fight and stand up for themselves. They can't kick and scream. They can't run away. They have nowhere to run to. They have nobody fighting their corner. They have nobody coming to save them apart from a few vigilante groups that exists. They're going to be kept there or face death or eventually probably have children that are born into it as well. And it really is time that we all sort of like really drew a line on this and sort of said that we can't really wait a year so much for everybody to come through on the Epstein stuff and... You know, we can't be faffing around on whether, because the other people weren't being tried, that nothing should happen to it at the moment. Because the consequences of this is children being used, whether it be 13, 14, 15-year-olds, or even the fact that women are being brought for this. I mean, I talk from a perspective of somebody who has lived the life of an escort, as you know, so... You know, it doesn't make me proud of it. It just means that, that you know, that I cl climbed through a level of my life that, that that was the only tool at the time that I felt was an option for me. But it gave me eyes to see things from a very different point of view. And we, the public, have to sort of step in now and go, there has to be a zero tolerance to this line that we're going to say for Great Britain and for all the children around the world really that they have this right to a life to be the people that they were created to be and not be drilled and conformed to these societal ways that exist and to ever be groomed for anything other than to be the best version of themselves and that there has to be a level of protection be it that we have child protection which is failing the children child protection here in the uk is failing the children not only is it failing the children here in the uk it's failing the children worldwide parents are failing their children the education system is failing their children and the reality is we're now stepping into a time of book of Re revelations where they said that the children would rebel um and the you know what we're seeing now with children smoking hash pipes or whatever it is and you know uh, the backlash to the parents and, and, and the unruliness and stuff um, I'm, I'm not talking about standing up for things I'm just talking about the fact that they have no identity um, 
then there's a real challenge going on for our youth at the moment because they're not being born into a life to know themselves just to be conformed to a system that chucks them out at 16, 18 or, or, or they, they, they sort of expel themselves from. But we have to sort of say that this level of sexualization that is going on with our children, be it through the media, be it through magazines, be it through YouTube, social media, any of that type that is taking away the innocence of our children, so ultimately grooming them to be sexual way beyond, way, way before their age and time and maturity, and also the fact that, you know, there has to be a line of zero tolerance, not this one's okay because of this, or this is okay because this circumstance is different, there has to be zero tolerance, there has to be, you know, we have, we can't have a softer, softer, softer approach, we can't have, we can't have a criminal justice system that says, it's okay because this person was in foster care, and they've had this life like this, so therefore they make the choices that they do, because, Ultimately, people here in the Western world have every tool available to them to be the best version of themselves, to overcome any form of adversity and trauma. And we do have the, the, the services here in the UK, whether it be alcohol, drugs, um, housing, money benefits, um, gambling, porn addiction, any of those things, everything and any, anything, the whole services isn't corrupt. There is a group of people that lead and monopolise us, that manipulate and control the whole force of it, but the majority of people who work within it are just good people trying to pay bills and do the best by themselves and try to help people as much as they can, but hands are tied within a system that sets people up to fail, if you get me. So, you know, not all of these people are bad, and I find it really difficult being in a world where people go, oh, well, I'm not going to speak to this person because, you know, you're being pro-social services or whatever like that. You know, the majority of people go into these services because they care and want to do something. It's just that there is another force that also controls and manipulates the people that work for them as well because it becomes a, a line of conformity and underhandedness and backhandedness and people infiltrate these systems so it's not necessarily the system that fought that itself it's the infiltration not forgetting that near five percent of the population are what is known to be called paedophiles people who love you know lovers of children as paedophilia actually means lover of children but this is lover of children that's crossing over into into physical and emotional and sexual relationships and also to the level of manipulating somebody to feel that that love is a genuine one when actually it isn't, but also going to a level of um, rape and torture and abuse and also holding people without their will and consent in confinements and prisons under ways of being done via kidnap or even born to be groomed within that world to exist for this purpose with money exchanged about this, which is what makes it child trafficking. You're going to find out with Epstein as well later on that a lot of his money is going to come through drug laundering. It's going to come through real proper swapping of these girls. You're going to find a lot more stuff underneath this as people dig even further. So don't forget these people all spoke on... So did so did so did the Clintons spoke on the National Achievers platform Google, Google Clinton and and Nash, and Success Resources. You know, I'm telling you, dots connect here somewhere. I just don't know yet properly. Once I start reading it out and mapping it properly, and I'm I'm standing onto my proper foundations, then you know I'll be able to sort of do it to a level that. That, yeah, and uh, and bring all of the pieces of information and stuff like that. At the end of the day, I'm not one of these women, you know. I wasn't abusing satanic rituals. I wasn't, you know, raped in care homes. I wasn't, you know, somebody who was even abused by my foster parents. My foster parents were, you know, who they were, but they weren't abusive foster parents. You know, there was challenges, of course, and, you know, ex new experiences. But um, 
other than smoking in the house and having to do chores, that was pretty much as bad as it went. Do you know what I mean? She fought quite a lot for me, my foster mother. So, um, you know, I have been through sexual abuse and rape, though. Um, so, but that's unprotected within my own family. So, um, you know, I see all sides of what goes on. I see everybody's opinion in all of this. And I watch a lot because, obviously, I'm a breastfeeding mother. So, um as much as I like to spend my time with my son when we are naturally feeding, you know, it's also a great opportunity to catch up with YouTube and, um, you know, crap book and things like that. So, especially if he just wants to lay asleep on me. So anyway, I am smoking. Um, yeah, the R. Kelly documentary, um, parents gave him the girls, so two sex. Can you outside now, can't you? still hate being seen smoking. Started to see about eating on camera. So anyway, I signed off sick today because I want to start to funnel myself into the foundations that here in the Western world we have for people with medical challenges. And I want to start fighting for the actual proper care that I need and also children need within this condition because... Is there a route to it that can be healed? I still don't know. I'm still trying. I'm still developing those ideas and strategies within the system and want to go more into talking about on them platforms and travelling with the EDS Society to talk about this because, uh, like I spoke to her today, I've still got all the wrongful diagnosis on me, so it's I still want all the paperwork cleared up. So I want to get all that done. I want to go to court. I want to get all that things filed. Um, pretty much just use this as a base through the summer until I move, hopefully by sort of September for the winter. So either thinking about, you know, snuggling up for winter here properly again and getting my book written, which is what I'd rather do. Um, and, you know, I really do want to find an equestrian uh, and start from there, really, sort of equestrian sort of size and build out from. So, um uh, yeah, I'm just going to catch up and watch a film tonight, really. It's quite cool. Liam's left me um, his Netflix account. So um, there's a thing that I've been watching on it, but I can never remember the name every time I go back on it and it doesn't come up. And it's quite interesting because it's, um, it's uh, about motherhood when it's not as fabulous as you first think and the actual real struggles that mums and parents have, you know, especially couples and stuff when you have children. Um... Uh, so it's quite cool watching it from that point of view. So, yeah, that's quite cool. So, yeah, I'm going to go and chill out and watch a film um, and start again tomorrow. So I get really tired by this time of night now. Um, but it's so nice to have my home back again. It's all straight. I came into it straight. And when I come home, I didn't have to worry whether Dean or Liam had gone for a shower or a bath and left towels on the bathroom that I've then got to go.